Sakaya. I know the other name is uh, Venetius. Maria Moreno, you're welcome. My name is Venasias Variamri, I'm a professor of computer science. I have at least 14 years of managerial experience. I've served as Vice Chancellor of Mackay University and Vice Chancellor of UTAM. I've chaired Mackay University Business School Council and St. Augustine International University uh, Council. I've chaired several boards, both nationally and regionally. I have a lot of experience in both private sector and public sector that is relevant for a university like McKay University that has a high number of private students. What drives me, I'm a nationalist and a pan-Africanist. I believe in building for the future like McKay University's motto. I look beyond, uh, beyond today. I'm very ambitious and passionate about higher education. Of course, I owe allegiance to my alma mater, Mackay University. I also somebody who believes in institutional development and growth. Mackay University derives its mandate from Section uh, 24 of the University and Other Tertiary Institutions Act, 2001 as amended, and it's guided by a strategic plan uh, with that mission, vision, and core values. The current Mackay University strategic plan is going to expire in 2019, June, and the successor one will take effect from 1st of July, 2019. And, and as, if I'm appointed vice chancellor, I'll be part of that process to come up with a new strategic plan. Now, these are the pillars of Mackay University. We have a, the top one is on the core, uh, core functions, and then we have the cross-cutting issues, and then the support functions. The core functions include teaching and learning, research and innovations, knowledge transfer partnerships and networking. And the cross-cutting issues include quality assurance, gender mainstreaming, and internationalization. So we have the support functions like human resource, library services, ICT, physical infrastructure and planning, organization and management, resource mobilization and investment, financial management, staff and student uh, social services. So this in a nutshell kind of gives you what the strategic plan of the university is. And out of this strategic plan of the university, Different units have come up with strategic plans. So my role as a vice chancellor is to be able to implement this strategic plan of the university through the unit strategic plans. If you look at uh, the law, like I said in section 24, a university is supposed to provide higher education, promote research, advance learning, and of course uh, uh, also provide, uh, disseminate knowledge, engage in dissemination of knowledge. And if you look at our vision, our mission, sorry, it talks about in providing innovative services uh, responsive to the national and global needs. So service delivery is central to what we offer at Mackay University. And uh, I would like to ensure that once I'm appointed, we shall have a fully fledged semesterized system where different programs are running every semester. We are going also to ensure that we run the evening distance. In addition to these ones, we also provide weekend and brokerage uh, programs. Uh, weekend and brokerage will be targeting mainly the working class who cannot come here every day. We're also going to ensure that all our services are ICT enabled, including integrating e-learning in all programs of the university. I'm looking at full automation of the university library to support the teaching and learning and research, and also to ensure efficient and effective access to university services. I shall also ensure that Mackay University services are ISO 9001 are certified in terms of quality management. We shall also ensure that there are service level agreements and also we shall have a Mackay University uh, customer service charter so that our main clients like students are able to know what they should expect out of the university in terms of services they get from the university. Uh, the other area is of course to establish service appraisal mechanisms. Now, in terms of teaching and learning, our main focus is going to be on providing quality teaching and learning. And in this regard, we are going to refurbish, upgrade, and set up new, uh, new teaching and learning infrastructure. And uh, a case in the point is uh, the Department of Dentistry and the Department of Architecture and Physical Planning, they, are, they don't have good infrastructure at the moment, so they need to be 
kind of, you have to have a, some bit of affirmative action. We're also going to increase the teaching and infraction materials in the budget until we reach 20% of the total budget. We shall also periodically review the academic program. We're going to mainstream ICT in all our programs, as I've already mentioned. We're also going to empower staff through the fresher courses. The other thing is we have, we are a research-ready university. We are going to increase our graduate students to 30% of the total enrollment. Now, in the area of research and innovations, our focus is going to be on uh, quality and outputs in the area of research and innovations. And at university and college level, we are going to ensure we have research and innovations agenda, we have a research innovation simulation strategy, we have research and innovations awards to promote research and innovations. We ensure that each college hosts an international conference, hosts an annual com uh, hosts a journal, and also has an open day as a way of disseminating the research findings. We are going to improve on the research environment within the colleges and also improve on the coordination between the colleges and the center. The other area is also to have a fully functional grants office. I know the College of Health Sciences has one, but in some colleges, some of the uh, grants offices are not, uh, are not that up to the mark. Now, the, the other area we are going to look at is set up multidisciplinary research centers so that the whole university can engage in multidisciplinary research. Now, of course, we are going to operationalize the institutional review boards in all colleges, ESCO boards, that are so important when you're undertaking the research. Now, as per Section 29 of the Universities and Other Tertiary Institutions Act, uh, Mackay University transformed into a collegiate university. So we have to ensure that looking at best practices elsewhere, we have to ensure that we entrench the 10 original constituent colleges by law to preserve Mackay University's identity, just like the 1995 constitution as per Schedule 1 of the constitution uh, preserved the districts of Uganda then uh, and entrenched them. So we're also going to develop academic, financial, administrative. I've also included HR affairs because when you put HR and uh, administration terms forgotten to the college as per the college statute and also as amended. We shall also ensure that the resources or revenue generated at colleges, a big chunk of those revenues remain at the colleges. We shall also ensure, as I've already mentioned, that we strengthen the systems and uh, structures at the college. Now, having talked about this and also knowing that the other uh, core function is knowledge transfer partnerships, transferring knowledge between the communities and the university, I would like to look at the issue of the financial resources. Where do we stand? If you look at that, pie chart. Most of our money comes from government. Then the second one is uh, education levies. We are getting little funding. We are getting little grants from uh, international governments. We had only 79 non-bilateral grants. And also in, uh, income from other sources was minimal. What this one shows that at, as a university, we need to increase in all areas of revenue. So we have to diversify. If you look at the short courses, we are able to generate only 2.5 billion shillings, which is way, way below what we used to generate uh, like five years ago. Uh, then if you look at the expenditure, again, 62.2% 62 is on employee costs. And then you can see what goes to goods and services like teaching materials and so on. What this one shows us that we still need to get more funding from government through subvention. We need to get more money from students, more money by, by increasing the number of students on our programs, grants and other sources, as I'll highlight later on. So, what am I proposing are the ways we can, uh, we can take to be able to generate resources. I intend that every year in office, we shall raise the, the resources of the university by 25%. Now, one of the issues we are going to look at is implementation of the investment strategy of the university. We are going to develop the Mackay University Idol Land for commercial and educational purposes. We are going to fully operationalize the Mackay University holding company which is already in place and thanks to the current management, also increase the endowment fund that has already been started. But more specifically, we're also going to look at increasing enrollment on the short courses and other academic programs. If you look at what I'm calling the Mackay University Open Campus, we are going to integrate e-learning with the distance education. We plan to have 100,000 students enrolled on these programs by 2022. If you look at the Mac Weekend and Book Release programs, we plan to have at least 50,000 students by 20. Uh, 22. We're also going to look at the area of internationalism where we are going to have joint programs, joint projects, 
I'd ensure that you are able to generate resources from that area. And the other area is business process uh, re-engineering. We are going to look at optimizing use of ICT, having paperless offices. We are going to diversify income and also lobby government for increased uh, uh, funding from subvention. So one of the things we have to do to get more money from government is to be able to improve our relationship with the government, especially the Minister of Education and Sports, and Minister of Planning and Economic Development. We have to engage Parliament, especially the Budget Committee and the Education and the Sports Committee. We have to lobby government to have a policy in place that uh, enables us to get money for every PhD completion and also for every research publication, as done elsewhere. We have put in place MOUs uh, with strategic partners. Currently, the College of Health Sciences uh, trains uh, students in case training centers and also provide a service. So that could be a source of income in addition to training our students from those places. There are initiatives by government, like the Prevention Science Initiative, which I negotiated when I was here as Vice Chancellor a few years ago. And most of the projects we have have improved the infrastructure of the university and other areas. So we need to continue working with the government to establish other programs like that. There was a program, Remote Sensing uh, Facility, which was supposed to commence in January of 2013. It's still pending. We can have a military academy. If you look at South Africa, Stellenbosch University has a military academy. Virginia Tech has a military academy. Instead of starting a Rugazi University, you can work with the government. And other areas like security. Now, we need to look at other areas, like engaging parents. If you look at schools like King's College, Budo, they are getting money from parents. I and friends raise funds. We need to link our startups with the industry and both generate money. And I'm planning to generate at, at around $1 billion US dollars from this event in the next year six years. More grants, more research, and more revenue. We are looking at the, the process of market University, which I've already talked about. Those ones will develop them. Now, the other area where you can generate money is to name buildings about people. Like, you can have Bill Gates, School of Computing and IT, and you can put money on that name. We also have to look at attracting people who are not able to produce from our own system. We're able to attract President Seveni. is now our alumnus. And uh, I think we, we feel proud about that. So we can get other people, high-ranking Nobel Prize winners, whom have not produced. We can also award only doctorates to philanthropists like Bill Gates and others. Also look at activists and uh, eminent politicians. These people will bring on board publicity, donations, and if one of them puts in their will, that can be a game changer for Makerere. Just imagine 1% of Bill Gates coming to Makerere. <laughs> now, the other area, uh, when you talk about money, now we have generated the money, we have to look at oversight. I'm looking at leadership and strategic management. And as Vice Chancellor, I will expand the management to include the principals and other directors at M3. We are going to, work to ensure that performance management is interested in the university. We are going to ensure that self-assessment reports at unit level are emphasized to ensure that you know, we are able to know what is happening on the ground. Now, once we have this money we have talked about generating, we are going to look at the issue of infrastructure development and allocate 10% of the budget to renovations and new buildings and also undertake strategic uh, infrastructure development, include the establishment of college health sciences, teaching hospital in Kataremwa, the College of Vocational Environmental Sciences in Kabanyoro, and so on. We're also going to look at how we can use some of our money and also work with uh, other governments to set up uh, facilities in terms of commercial building in Koro and Makindi. And uh, the other thing we have to look at is on the cross-cutting issues. It is very, very important that once you have money, you emphasize gender-based budgeting. You need to mainstream gender quota so international in all our programs and activities. And there is already, uh, the plan already takes care of that, so we have to just implement. And the other thing I would like to talk about is on staff welfare. We need to look at how we can build winning teams. We need to improve on the working environment, including offices for staff. We need to implement the medical insurance scheme that the current management has already started, which is going to start next academic year. We need to have and to implement a staff housing scheme because you see professors retiring from the university and they have nowhere to go. So we need to have that. So we need to support efforts for a living wage. We need to enable equitable promotions of all staff in the university. Right now, the administrative and support staff are kind of not happy. So we need to look at also review the age limits for senior academic staff. And this is important because if you are going to increase the number of graduate students to 30% of the total enrollment, you need senior staff to supervise them and teach them. Uh, the other thing is, uh, on those people, if you look at people like uh, Professor Bob, who is at Strasmo University, I met him recently, you look at Ari Mazuru, who retired at 81, you look at Professor Sebu Ufu, and so many others. Even at 80, you are still very active. So we need to increase the retirement age to 80 for professors and associate professors. We need also to increase the retirement age for senior lecturers to 75. But also we need to attract 
high profile professors like former vice chancellors into Makere University so that they can help us raise the profile of the university and also mobilize grants and donations. All of you who remember Professor Sebufu, he used to be good at this. If he was still at Makere, would be far, far, far away. In the area of student welfare, we need to ensure that there is a, we implement a flexible fees payment system. We continue to improve the internship program and also revamp the student center facilities. We need to look at the security both on campus and off campus. We need to promote a student staff exchange program uh, because we get so many international students and they cannot easily get affordable accommodation. And also we need to look into that for staff and the students. The other area in the area of students, we have to revamp the student sporting facilities and also support inter-university games and other games. We need to look at setting up student support systems and also establish social amenities like facility, I mean, remedial support for students, mentorship, and so on. Now, the current management has done a lot in their, in their time, and I can assure you there is a lot there. I would like to mention a few which are up there. But I was impressed by Professor Dumba when I met him in KCA corridors, trying to follow up the issue of roads and so on. And recently, he called me to come for the run for Makerere. I think there are good initiatives, and that shows the level of commitment. So I would like to support management, the current management, that all these they have been doing, we shall take it on. If you look at ADB buildings, they started in my regime in terms of coming up with the concept with the guy of ADB, and finally we were able to negotiate these grants, and McKay University got his share. So this will be in the handover report, of course, and they shall be addressed accordingly. Now, in my, for my previous record, I've been able to mobilize resources for the university in millions of dollars. I cannot emulate everything I've done. At, when I was here as vice chancellor, it was a lot. I negotiated, I also uh, ensured that we got these grants. In the area of uh, the other areas, I was able to, uh, to work with management and council, and they all the stakeholders that put in place uh, the Makay University Constituent Colleges, the statute to decentralize these activities to colleges, improve service delivery, and so on. Improved service delivery, you can see those students smiling. We're able to improve service delivery to students. <laughs> getting transcripts and, uh, at graduation day, we automated student services like registration and fees payment, improved lead time for academic staff promotions. These things should be done online, and I'm an expert in ICT. You don't have to do promotions by looking at hard copy papers. We can monitor that. We developed partnerships. Over 200 MOs were signed in, in that time when I served as VC. We increased the research and innovation grants, increased the partnership with the private sector, also increased the partnership with the government, as I've already mentioned. If you look at mark visibility, we are able to improve the rankings and ratings of Makere University. And I'm glad that some of this has continued. And when I come back, we are going to start from there and continue with what we have already done. Now, as the Dean, Director of the Institute of Computer Science at Makere University, we are able to put up two buildings, one of them through internal generated funds. We're able to bring in staff development programs, do curriculum development, and all those things that make a school or an institute. We're able to generate lots of grants and millions of dollars that supported staff development and other things. Now, when I look at my time I spent at Makere, it's been a short time, though I still look young, but <laughs> it was filled with numerous achievements. There's still more we can do for Makere, and I'm ready to, to get it done. If you look at that building, that's the building got from internally generated funds. Those are the labs we set up here. You look at that tele-education lab facility. You look at eminent personnel being awarded honorary doctorates, bringing about visibility for the university. This is what we need to continue with. Now, <laughs> building for the future is our sole responsibility. It Please is wind important, up. yes, I know, that in the next five years, we are opening up a new chapter of building McKay University for the future. So all I'm asking for is give me what to stand so that we can build McKay University together for the future. Now, if you don't know, we have had 10 vice chancellors, Ugandan vice chancellors, and if you look at Professor Wander and Professor Kajubi, they had to come back for another term. So I'm not the first one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, most importantly, we are all stakeholders in, in turning around McKay University. If chosen as vice chancellor, I pray to work with my competitors because Silence, all bring please. issues to the table, key issues. And one, what I would like to say, is that I would like to really work with Professor Nawangwe. He still has a second term as DVC. Professor Chumira has just applied for the position of principal. So I'll work with him as a principal <laughs> of choose. So I will do to Makay University what Steve Jobs did to Apple. For God and my country, I thank you.
articulated a number of strategies that you are bringing on board. You also gave cognizance to the existence of the strategic plan for Makerere University. Could you, in clear terms, tell the audience or clarify on the kind of tools, the type of tools or instruments you are going to use in the implementation of the strategic plan as well as the goals. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you look at the strategic plan of Mackay University, it has goals, it has objectives, it has strategies. So it also has a monitoring and evaluation mechanism within it. Now, the, the main Mackay University strategic plan is the framework plan. It is the it is implemented through plans at the units. You have the colleges, you have the support units. So what I will do, one of them is to monitor. I use monitoring tools to monitor the progress of the strategic plan. I use uh, performance management. When I'm discussing with the principal and other members of management, you have to ensure that you agree on the tasks and then you monitor and later on you can review. You look at your contribution. What are you contributing? to the overall goals of the university. I use that. The other area, some of the things the university will be doing, you can easily monitor it online. We will use ICT tools to monitor that. The other one is through committees. You have uh, uh, Senate committees, you have faculty boards, departmental boards, you have college uh, boards and committees. Through those, you are able to look at the progress because those reports will be submitted. Some of them will come through the committees to Senate, Others can end up here, uh, in, like in the McKay University Council. I also have to use management meetings to get some of the feedback. Like I said, I'm going to expand and include principles uh, in management. The other area is requiring uh, the people to submit progress reports, the people in management, that get to know to what extent you have been implemented. So in a way, I'm going to use a variety of tools to monitor the success of the strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My question or my concern goes, what other plans do you have for the promotion of support staff? For the many years I've been here, very many other staff have been promoted and those are academic staff. What plans do you have for us as support staff? Thank you. Prof, uh, in your first term, uh, your policies benefited quite a bit the mass fraternity of the university. And as a man, I can confess, those who benefited. However, in your presentation today, I have seen nothing as far as administrative staff are concerned. You're only talking about promotion of academic staff, uh, creating houses for academic staff. Where does administrative staff feature here? In, oh, you're not thinking about us in this term of office. Thank you. Uh, Professor William Leva, as a presidential candidate in the 2016 uh, elections, you were asked one of the regrets you have in life. And your deliberations were, you regret joining Makere University after your PhD. Now that you had time to do other things, what brings you back to Makere? And how sure are we that if another better opportunity comes up, you will not leave Makere for another opportunity? Thank, Thank you. you. Last night, again in the news, Makere University, according to the visitation report, has been raided by ghost students. In your term as a VC, do we envisage the total extermination of these ghosts or the problem may persist? And how will you address that? Thank you. On behalf of student leaders and the fact that we have seen the <laughs> level of student leadership is degrading in this university, I'm so happy with Professor's presentation and I want to know specifically internationalization of student leadership. How are we going to enhance our student leadership to encounter the problems in this nation like the Mutevides, the former Otunus, what? As a VC, how are you going to help us? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll begin with the one uh, for what are the plans for the promotion of support staff. I had only 20 minutes to cover a lot. But if you remember in one of my slides, I said look at equitable promotion of all staff, academic, administrative, and support. And I said that administrative staff and support staff were not happy. 
uh, when uh, I served here as vice chancellor, I remember us upgrading several staff within the, the support staff category. Some of them were appointed assistant accountants seven years ago. They still hold those positions. So within the support staff structure, which starts around M15, uh, M15 to around M8, so you can progressively move people up. Not everybody has to move up. We have to agree on the number of positions. Also within a given salary scale, people can still move up a step. So we are going to look in these issues because everybody matters. Everybody should feel motivated. The other issue came from uh, Massa, saying I didn't say much about Massa. But if you remember, on the slide to do with staff, I talked about uh, houses for staff, but I used the example of professors. So you see, I had limited time. That is a scheme for all staff. And uh, I've talked a lot about staff improving the working environment. And of course, the issue of promotion, I've talked about it. We also have to look at the issue of uh, administrative staff. I used an example of professors. At times these days, the life expectancy has improved. Uh, you may realize that people at 60 are still active. So why do we retire some of them to staff at 60? We look into all those issues, but that's a decision for council. But for academic staff, I appeal uh, to council to ensure that we keep these people because the older, the wiser. Uh, somebody asked me about to, uh, as a presidential candidate, that when I was asked, I said uh, one of my regrets was to work at market. That's not what I said. I said it was uh, to work in the public service. Now. When questions are asked, when questions are asked, you have to put them into context. At that time, I was a presidential candidate. There was high unemployment. So one of the things I had to do is, first of all, to motivate those who don't have jobs to go out there and employ themselves. <laughs> secondly, <laughs> secondly, to encourage them that if I had not come to Makerere, I would have actually created many jobs for them. And then, of course, the last one, I needed the votes from the unemployed who are the majority. So I had to put it in that context. <laughs> so, there's a question on uh, that last night in the news that McKay University has been raided by ghost students. How do we envisage? Uh, will I like, ensure that this is terminated? One thing I talked about in the first slide when I talked about service delivery, one of the things I emphasized was that you're going to use ICT, and you know I'm a professor of computer science. You can call it ICT. Most of what we do in this university can actually be done using computers, and you can track. You can even have trades in the systems. So to me, if like we are going to raise money, but when you raise money, you have to ensure you put it in the different areas. Like we, we've, we reach a point where we can even install uh, systems at lecture theaters and examination rooms, you will not be able to enter unless you are a student because you have your card, which has everything. You can use to access the library, access the lecture theaters, access the examination rooms, and so on. Also used as your identity card. So this, I can assure you, will be completely eliminated. I do this for consultancy purposes in other institutions and other countries abroad. I can do it here for my career. You don't have to hire a consultant. I'll do it for you. <laughs> On behalf of the student leaders, you're saying that uh, how do we enable the student leadership to become international people, people of international eminency, like Professor Tumsime Mutevire, like Oraro Tunu, and so on. You see, that starts from what I talked about. At the university, we need to minimize on the strikes so that students from other universities abroad are able to come here and finish a semester. Because these days, many people think that if you come to Makere, you not finish a semester. So when these students come, you interact with them, then the other one is that we shall also be able to have exchange students. We shall be able to have uh, exchange students from Makere going to other universities abroad. And when you have been a student leader like at Makere University and you finish well, we can also support you as a student leader to go for fellowship uh, in other universities abroad, also attach you to organizations. You've seen MPs going to America uh, for attachment. So we can also attach you to leaders outside Uganda, and I can assure you, within no time, you also be an international scorer, an international personality. I thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the first session. You can sit, but my colleague will pass around with, a, with a three pieces of paper. We ask you to pick one of them.
and then you read for us what the paper says. We know that there is stuffing of the ballot here, but this time pick only one, please. So the last candidate to pick there, what number do you have? You have a microphone in front of you. You can tell the public what number you have. Number three. You are candidate number three. Candidate number two. Candidate number two. <laughs> I can assure you there was no rigging. Please tell us, tell us, yes. Candidate number one. Candidate number one. So, colleagues, for the candidature of Vice Chancellor of Makere University, we have three prepared questions which the moderators are going to ask you. We expect you to respond to each of the questions and we shall follow this order. For the first question, we follow the order of the numbers, one, two, three. And for the second question, the second candidate starts, followed by the third, then followed by the first candidate. And for the third question, the third candidate starts, followed by the first, and then the second candidate last. How do you plan to strengthen the role of Makerere University in the public space, in the national policy arena and development? Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Makere University is a very strong university. We account for 95% of all research publications in this country. We account for 95% of all publications in this country. Unfortunately, most of them end up on the shelves of researchers after they get promoted. This is a great potential. We just need to put in place the necessary structures. If you read through my book, why I was not able to elaborate due to shortage of time, I am setting up a government liaison office. This office is going to be my spy on what government is doing so that I know everything, what is happening in this, so what, are they planning any policy? What you know, consultants do they need? So, putting up the necessary structure to liaise with the government very efficiently is what I'm going to do. Thank you very much for the question. Already, Makea University is doing a lot in contributing to national development. A lot of members here belong to various committees. Um, what we need to do, and that's why I mentioned the committee structure that harmonizes what we are already doing. So it's something that uh, uh, we, we see. For example, I, I'll give an example. I chair the Resource Mobilization Committee for Global Fund for the, for the nation. And I'm sure that a number of the members of staff, and that's why I referred that the greatest resource that we have is the human resource here. What we need to do is to bring back those debates, those conversations that we are seeing. Uh, and, and I give an example. During the last um, presidential elections, my, our department, the Department of Political Science, had a, a huge opportunity of being part and parcel of that process. In fact, we did, uh, the head of the Department of Political Science chaired the, the public debate where some of his colleagues were. And so this is the place of McKinley University, not to do these things as individuals, but to do them as institutionally organized. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. One of the core functions of Makai University is knowledge transfer partnerships, or ad technology transfer. So as a university, we can have a two-way communication with the general public. 
The other thing is that our innovation can be, be also like, you know, can promote us in the communities. We also need to look at the element of dissemination through conferences, through workshops, uh, and other avenues. At the national level, you can look at policy briefs to parliament. We can look at engaging uh, parliament whenever they are coming up with bills. We can look at advisory services to all the three arms of government. We have good professors here in law. I like reading most of the time articles from Professor Roko Nyango. So we can actually influence <laughs> the public on, uh, depending on what we are doing at McKay University. The other element is on uh, participating in international events. That's, we can be able to influence what's happening elsewhere. Publishing with international faculty, having joint programs, basically pushing this idea of internationalization. Also being on international bodies, like I used to sit on the UN, Advisory Council for the Secretary General, have participated in the African Union Commission activities and so on. So we need to go out there, and there are so many people here who participate across the globe. So to me, uh, there is a lot we can do. Our faculty can have sabbatical, can have short visits at other universities, other organizations abroad, and even here within the country. What's wrong with somebody at Makerere visiting uh, Kabare University or UCU for a semester? Thank you very much. So the question is, Makerere University's successes and challenges can be adduced to her diverse stakeholders. As a leader, could you explain how you intend to bring about cohesiveness in addressing the challenges? I think for quite a good time, Mackay University has looked inwards. We have been spending more time discussing and perhaps even conflicting among ourselves. And so, in a way, that has created a situation where the cohesiveness, even within among ourselves, has been affected. So, part of the agenda is to begin to address the internal cohesiveness. Because if you're not internally working together, you cannot even think about cohesiveness of the diverse uh, players out there. To the extent that sometimes because we have lacked the cohesiveness internally, the gap has been filled by the other diverse players. And so I would like to start with that first, to increase the ownership and the togetherness of us, so that then we can meet the rest of the partners as one. We have had cases where we've gone to some of these fora, and we can't even speak one voice. Each one of us who is going there is speaking something different. So that's the first, the first um, place we have to start. The second is to have continuous or periodic engagement uh, so that we do not wait, for example, for government to invite us when there is a problem. But to have government, development partners, and the others. So for example, if we have the annual stakeholders meetings that we used to have then, that bring together people to look at what we are doing, what they would like us to do, and we work together. But my first is to deal with internal cohesiveness so that then uh, we can speak. In the morning, there was a question about whether the, uh, the administrators were separate and so forth. So we work on that, then we can engage. The second thing is that each one of us has trained people that are representative of those diverse uh, players out there. We would like to exploit and encourage that advantage that we have to relate with the various um, stakeholders. So again, the basis is really us to go out there and work with the rest of them in a partnership mode. I think sometimes we've gone there in a confrontational mode. I would like to change that so that we can work um, in, 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 in partnership. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, thank you very much. I think starting with 
with, with Mackay University, we need to ensure that all the stakeholders within Mackay University knows their roles and responsibilities. So that has to be explained to everybody and we have to understand what those roles and responsibilities are, right? From students, staff, management, governance, organs, and so on. The next one is to ensure that within the university, we have team building activities. And whenever there are issues, you look at how best to address them. It is important for leaders to listen uh, to their subordinates and also their seniors. We need to do a lot of consultations. We need to have stakeholder engagements. Now, on top of this, we need to look at the institutional structures. Do the structures support cohesiveness? Are the laws weak? Are we engaging with the external stakeholders like alumni, parents, the international community? We have to have all those concerns addressed. At times, there can be misinformation out there. And also have to create avenues where the university can continuously engage with within, uh, within the country and outside the country. And if you focus on what the university stands for, the mission, vision, and you ensure that everybody moves in that direction, all these issues can be addressed. Because what normally happens, if you don't have a common focus, people can stray. So if you can have the activities, people are engaged, there is consultation, there is leadership, there are conflict resolution mechanisms, you can have cohesiveness. I thank you. I'm going to use my strength to deal with this problem. I ha you know, our stakeholders are students, staff, government, the public, and our donors. As you know, I have good rapport with the staff. The students are always uh, marching with me. I believe with the various MOUs that I have already created with the government, they now believe in me. The public, I understand this morning, was saying, yeah, probably, yeah. And I told you, the donors, they just like me. <laughs> now, if you have everybody believing in you, what you need is clear-headed leadership, which I have. So, it will be very easy for me to bring all these people together. What is important is to make everybody understand we have one common purpose. What is this common purpose? Taking our people out of poverty. Can we take that leadership? Can we bring everybody together? We are ready to move. Makere University, all of you have stated, is a premier institution, premier university in Uganda. And yet, out there, people have started posing doubts on the quality of our graduates coming out of this university. What I would like you to, to do for us this morning, afternoon, is to mention three factors in your view which are likely responsible for these doubts. And then you quickly give us your plan to address them. In my presentation, when I was talking about the budget, I said 62.2, if you look at the, the financial statements for the year, ended 20, June 2016, June 30, 2016. 62.2% of the resources were spent on the wage bill or employee costs. And when you look at what was left for things like teaching materials and other core activities of the university like research, there was little left. Yet at the same time, we have not reached the living wage. So one of the issues is underfunding. And as I suggested, we are going to increase on resource mobilization to ensure that we have funds to support all the core activities of the university so that our products, when they get out there, uh, they are not uh, they are underlooked. Uh, the other one is uh, communication. People can have perceptions about an institution. They can even doubt your products when your products are very good. I've seen graduates leaving Makere, they're going to Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard, and they excel after their bachelors. They become the best students. I did it in Norway. I was 
they are best students in my year for PhD. So we need to communicate to the public uh, what is happening. Then the other one is again on staff. If you look at our establishment, uh, McKay University is currently understaffed. We need to do a HR audit and find out where we need to recruit immediately, where we need to relegate to colleges. At times, some of these things don't happen because you find like somebody has a project at the college and has to come to the center to recruit the project staff. You know, we need to decentralize some of these things to the colleges and ensure the issue of human resources is addressed. But the other solution is to deploy e-learning. Use professors, lecturers elsewhere. Use people in the industry to address the issue of understaffing. And we, you can also look at internet labs like at MIT and other places. So we are very innovative. And the good thing, I'm a professor of ICT or computer science. All these issues of using technology to enhance the teaching and learning, uh, I'll look into them and we shall have them implemented. I thank you very much. Thank you. I have been following the public concerns about Makerere's academic credentials keenly over many years. The first one used to be the large numbers of students versus the space. There was a time when newspapers used to sell by saying our students are studying by rumors because we had large numbers who could not fit in a classroom. Largely, we have addressed that. But we will continue addressing that issue. We are improving our facilities. We are going to introduce modern teaching methods apart from the space that we have created. That's one thing. But of course, we need to inform the public. They don't know that our students no longer study through rumors. The first one is the integrity of academic papers. Of course, we have a problem that we are competing with the NASA Road, which also prints our certificates. But we introduce a system. What we need to do, and what I actually already started doing, is to ensure that nobody tampers with our academic credentials. We must ensure the security of our results. And that's why I'm advocating that as much as is possible, all academic issues should go to the colleges, transcripts are issued there, nobody should be able to change any mark. The moment, that's one of the things that has got the greatest danger of tarnishing and destroying our university as a top university. There has been the issue of sex, of sex for marks. We have handled that, but here, let me warn everybody, there will be no compromise. Any report that you are trying to do anything in that direction, we shall discuss when you are out of the university. Thank you. Thank you very much. The way I have appreciated the, the, the question is that is one of the public opinion, not so much we ourselves inside. Because internally, we continue to excel in terms of research, in terms of publications, and that is why we continue to be third, fourth. And so, for me, the issue is that how come that uh, we are in that league and people still doubt uh, the, the, you know, the standing of Makere University? Three things. The first one is strikes and unrests within Makere University, getting to a stage where parents and the public are not sure that if they committed their children to us, they will be able to finish within that time. That's the first thing. The second one is uh, the quality of programs and the products that we put out there. You know, where you find employers doubting the, the students that we pass out and saying they are not measuring up to what uh, they, they, they're supposed to do. Although when they go abroad, they excel. So that's another thing. The third one <laughs> is... Uh, is relevance, our relevance to the national development process. 
we continuously get those questions that, yes, you are good, but we don't see you. We do not see somebody who has been part and parcel of developing, for example, you know, a, a policy that allows government to deal with the East African community issues. So those are, I think, are the three factors that I see that work against us. The first one on strikes and unrest, uh, because then people say it is students, it's lecturers, it's administrative staff, we don't know who's going to strike next. And part of the issue has been that there hasn't really been that much communication across. And that is why in my presentation I did mention something on working on inclusiveness, on ownership, uh, through committee structures, through discussions and debates, strengthening the departments. Over the years, the departments have weakened. And I think that if we strengthen the departments, secondly, as I mentioned, working on student leadership structures so that we can, you know, revive and revigorate the role of the guild. Because right now, I think student leadership structures are presenting a problem and therefore it becomes very difficult to deal with, the, with the, this unrest and so forth. Again, when you look at Mwasa, Masa, I would like to see a, a broader engagement within those. I think we are getting to a stage where the executive is Mwasa or the executive is Masa. We would like to see how we can go back uh, to those. So that's the first factor. The second factor on quality of programs and the products that we pass out. In my presentation, I did mention strengthening overt quality assurance. We have already started on the process of, uh, of uh, restructuring, of uh, harmonizing of programs, and I think that that is going to create possibility of reviewing our programs and I would like already to say that we have support from development partners to look at our curriculum to see that we have, um, you know, curricula that can produce uh, people. So, real, and that's where the issues of missing marks, of, Your time. Of, of quality and things. The last one is relevance to national development agenda. And I would like to see Makere University playing greater role in policy formulation especially in guiding government on some of these policies like PPP and the others that are coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the public, we would just like to spice up this presentation a little bit. And we request candidate number three to pose a question to one of his colleagues. <laughs> Anything that you can pose a question to each of your colleagues, one for candidate number one and one for candidate number two. And we, they respond in one minute, one minute. Sorry, I pose it to both of them. You can pose one question to both of them or you can pose separate questions. The choice is yours. But both of them should have opportunity to address you. using your experience in the area of research and innovations, how are you going to rely on that experience to promote research and development in Mackay University and make Mackay University the number one research university? Currently, the emphasis has been on individual excellence. A lot of people are writing a lot of research projects, but they are individual projects. I would like to move this individuality to communality. I would like, and that is why in the morning I talked about centers of excellence. I'll give an example. Professor Sabit, he has one of the really nice center of excellence on uh, garbage collection and so forth. We would like to build around that a community of researchers that can also help doctoral students, master's students, so using those, we can harness our, our leadership 
in, 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 in this area. So I think moving from individual to community of researchers, we will harness the capacities, we write bigger projects, and we will produce greater results. Thank That's you. how I would like to say it. Thank Thank you. You. I didn't know that Professor Zariam Reva knows that I have so much experience. <laughs> in research management. Indeed, my experience is immense. As I told you earlier, I led the SIDA program to become the best program for 30 years of SARC existence. That's an immense experience. I have led the regional programs, including the regional program in engineering, for three major universities in Eastern and, and in Southern Africa. I have, I have led the consortium on vernacular architecture. That experience is going to give me the ability to roll out all that experience to the rest of the university to encourage multidisciplinary research teams, which are the order of the day in many universities, and where we are somehow lagging behind. Thank you very much. I'll pose one question to both my colleagues, because both my colleagues have been in the high office, so this should be applicable to both of them. Um, one of the things that bothers us at Makere University is the level of withdrawal, and sometimes people call it apathy that you experience or you see in the academic staff, the administrative staff, the support staff. What will you do to turn around that so that we have an engaged community of Makerere University? Thank you. Thank you by assuring Professor Kirumira that I have not been the VC. Because he said we have been both to that office. I haven't been there yet. I just want to go there. <laughs> however, however, the level of withdrawal of our staff, what is the magnitude of the level of withdrawal? I don't, it, I don't think it is such a big issue. I have said, I have said, if we had that level of, with, of withdrawal, there is no way we would be anywhere as number two in research in Africa. Even in academic programs, we are ranked number three. So, let, we may have a few people, and we are aware, and we are dealing with that problem. Some people who just disappear, we get to know that, and we deal with it. I have confidence in my academic staff. I have confidence that it is they, together with the administrators and support staff, that are going to propel us to number one in, within one year. One of the issues that makes staff withdraw has to do with uh, promotions. Uh, if you look at the administrative staff, support staff, some of these people stay for 20 years without any promotion without any movement in the salary steps. So we need to ensure that we bring about equitable promotions for both academic, administrative, and support. The other element, if you want somebody, if you want somebody to do some work, at times they may not have the skills. So you have to engage in capacity building for staff. And capacity building across uh, all categories. If you want somebody to write a research grant, train them. You know, if you want somebody to teach well, give them refresher courses. This is the issue of living wage. Uh, staff feel that what their students earn out there <laughs> is much more than what they are earning here at Makerere. So we need to look into this issue and continue uh, to work towards the living wage. There is an issue of research environment. If I'm a professor, I don't have a good lab, a good environment, I don't have research assistants, I can kind of get frustrated in a way. If I'm going to teach, and I'm teaching industrial chemistry, I need to find chemicals, <laughs> the teaching materials, instructional materials in the labs. So in most cases, 
those are some of the things that make staff withdraw. We need to improve on the learning environment. We need to improve on the, even offices. Some people may not have offices, they say no. I think I have to be outside. And lastly, we need to come up with a motivation recognition system where performers are recognized and those who are not performing are also improved on. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have separate questions for each of, the, of my colleagues. For candidate number three, could you share with us the different challenges in competing for presidency as, competing, as compared to pre competing for vice chancellorship? <laughs> for candidate number two, could you tell us the greatest achievement which gives you the confidence that you could actually compete with me? Candidate number two, you'll go first. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, my friend here is going to have a tough time competing with me, so that, that should not be... That should not be a really big thing. But seriously, if I may to mention one thing that I know I'm very, very, very good at, is human resource capacity build. Every unit that I've headed, and department, former faculty, now the college, can testify that that is one area. I'll look for the funds, I'll get the people trained, I'll give them postdoc opportunities, we, will, we have formed teams to do research projects, so that is one area. And if somebody is to lead this Makerere University, you need to have a human resource that is really good, that you go out there and the pr professor stands up and say, I'm in charge of a $2 million project and I am calling government to come and sit and we'll look at this. So one area that I'm sure that none of my colleagues here can compete with me is in the area of human resource. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the challenges in the race for the VC and the race for the presidency is like if it was a boxing game, you know, I would have already given them a knockout. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to go all the way up to the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> whether you are set experience or what they say, you have to go all the way up to the end. So I'm doing that. The other one is, uh, you know, in politics, at times performance does not matter. They can vote for whom they want, whether he has given the same sort or otherwise. When it comes to, in a university setting, there are times when the race for the VC can also become a bit political. Some people can go maligning you, somebody can say this guy is a drunkard, you know, when you have never been a drunkard, and they can even go to some offices, you know. So those are challenges. You need to ensure that you focus on what people can do. Uh, and also, if you are going to choose a vice chancellor, for example, one challenge you should always, one challenge that we always face in many institutions, they say when you are putting in place like a search committee, it becomes political. Instead of going to Senate and say, uh, we want to select a such committee. The vice chancellor is going to be responsible for the academic, administrative, and financial affairs. Who can we put in the area of finance, the area of administration, the area of academics, and you have a balanced team? I'm not saying the, the current team is not okay, it's very okay, but I'm saying <laughs> you look at those issues. Uh, and then the other one is on, uh, you have to know how to please the people who are going to finally uh, make you be a vice chancellor, or be the president of the country. There are times when you have to take to say, this is what I want to do, but you can't say it. I'll give you an example. If any candidate stood here and said, we need to reform the governance structure of council, said, that one will not vote for him. So we need to look at these issues. <laughs> and uh, they can easily affect you. And the very, the very, very last one. Yes. When you are choosing a VC, 
You know the VC position like in Uganda, it requires a lot of energy. You need someone like me at 48 who can walk there at night. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank All dignitaries here present. Vice Chancellor, potential Vice Chancellors uh, or candidates, um, the public and the media, on behalf of my colleague and myself, I would like to appreciate the confidence that Council has bestowed on the two of us to come and moderate this important function today. Makerere University is a very important institution in this country, in this region, and all of us are beneficiaries of this great institution. We, as you have seen, have done our best let the best take the position. That is the word I would like to end with. Thank you. Our job is more or less done. We'd like to take the audience back to the chairperson of the selection committee to uh, take, uh, give us some conclusion remarks. We'd like to thank, first of all, the council and senate for the confidence that you had in the members of the search committee. And again, I asked them to stand as they did at the beginning, search committee. Thank you. They have really made this work easy, together with the Secretariat. We also would like to thank all of you who came here today in such large numbers. It shows the confidence that you have and the, the recognition of how important this process is. So can you give yourselves a clap? Mm. It's been great. We really would like to thank the candidates for the time that you put in to prepare the presentations, for the cordial way in which you've interacted with each other. Sometimes you can get competitors who come to blows, or almost come to blows, but this has not been the case here. Thank you very much for that. And on behalf of all of us to thank the moderators, you have really done a good job. giving adequate time to every candidate to lay out their vision. I will close by emphasizing to all of us that this is the third part of a, a long process we have been on. The marks from today will be compiled with the marks from the interviews that we did last week and the written part, the application process that was also scored all of those will then go to Senate, and Senate will then pass on their recommendations to Council. As we do that, I would like you to go recognizing that the choice which will be made at the end of this process has huge implications for Macquarie University. It might have been an interesting process, and we wanted it to be that, it was a good debate, and that was important. But the fundamental thing is that out of this, we will have the chief executive of the university. We know that Makere has a lot of potential. We also know it has a lot of achievements, but there are also challenges. And those challenges need to be managed for us to achieve the potential. As you leave, have certain statistics in your mind. We know that Africa is rich. 
It's the richest continent in terms of resources. But in every single indicator around development, it's at the bottom of the pile. Uganda wants to be a middle-income country. It will not come just from words. It will come from actions. So those bodies moving forward, including Senate and Council, you have a huge responsibility in your hands to make a decision that will take Makere forward with the best possible manager. Let's apply our power in a way that will take Makere forward and harness these opportunities. Our young people are looking for solutions. We want quality products who can get good jobs. Our staff are also looking for better environments. It's the job of the head of the institution to make those things happen with the team. Let us be very conscious of application of our power moving forward. I thank you for the time you have given and the attention, and I urge all of us to take this seriously moving forward as well. I thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.